our next speaker is very ready na kayo, no? Sa Visaya pa na, nagpanikad na si Sir. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, allow me to introduce our next technical speaker, no? Um, on topics about diesel, generator, control, protection, and maintenance. With regards to his background, he is a seasoned electrical engineer and entrepreneur. With over 20 years of diverse experience in the field of electrical engineering in various industries, focus on power generation and large industry, electrical system maintenance. Currently connected with one of the largest aluminum manufacturing companies in the world, the Emirates Global Aluminum. He is a professional electrical engineer and a member of IIEE UAA or United Arab Emirates, a former executive secretary of the said chapter. He is a former department head of Kohler Power System or SDMO Industry Services and Maintenance based in Qatar, a France trained specialist on the brand's latest generator controllers during his term of service. He lead and perform hundreds of diesel power generator installation, commissioning and maintenance work with notable projects inside the Pearl Qatar, the, the West Bay in the city of Doha, and a considerable percentage of luxury yachts, marine generators, including the Amery Yachts, or Yati Sabisaya an alumnus of Bicol Univers University College of Engineering, graduate in the year 2000. Currently, he takes up his Master's of Arts in Business and Management at Baspa University, United Kingdom, and a Master of Business Administration major in Marketing and Brand Management, Paul Paris Alternate France. He is a founder of BNP Link LLC in United Arab Emirates, a company that provides engineering services and related technical consultancies as well as retail and trade and are currently connected with a supplier of diesel generators and high voltage transformer based in Lebanon and UK. A member of Philippine Business Council at, of Dubai and Northern Emirates and an advocate of entrepreneurial engineering. Without further ado, let's welcome our next speaker, Engineer Eduardo E. If I am not mistaken, sir, sorry, kung masayap na pronounce, Bangate or Bangga, Bangat, Bangate? Bangate, Engineer Larry. Bangate, sir. Maraming salamat, Engineer Larry. Yes, Good sir. afternoon to my fellow uh, electrical engineers. Good morning. Uh, let me share my presentation. All right. Can uh, anybody confirm to me? Yes, if sir. My presentation uh, is uh, ready. Visible na po yon, sir. Hindi naman ako naka presenter mode sa view niyo, no. It's fine. Okay, okay. Maraming salamat again, Engineer Larry. And uh, Amir Yak, by the way, is the yak, the yak of uh, the Emir of Qatar, yung hari ng Qatar. So pagka nagkamali ka, medyo uh, critical. Anyhow, so my name is uh, once again Engineer Eduardo Arjona Bangati Jr. I am uh, a member of uh, IIEE UAE chapter. I'm currently in the UAE. And uh, I am tasked to present to you the diesel generator control, protection, and maintenance. I hope I can present it properly. I know you are all professionals. So allow me to share some of my uh, knowledge and experience uh, in the field of diesel generators. Okay, so what is a diesel generator? First and foremost, a diesel generator is, or DigiSet, is the combination 
of diesel engine with an electric generator or an alternator to generate electrical uh, energy. Let me just uh, remove this one. Okay. So the main parts of the diesel generator is presented. We have the engine, alternator, fuel system, voltage regulator, cooling and exhaust system, lubrication system, battery charger, control panel, main assembly frame or the, the skid uh, structure of the generator, which is a lot of times or sometimes they also use this part for keeping the uh, fuel tank of some of the generators. So before I proceed directly with the topic, let us understand why it is important to study about the diesel generator. What is its economic significance, particularly for us engineers, especially in the Philippines, to those who are in the generator business, those whose work are directly involved in generators, whether it is in sales, operations, maintenance. So what do we look forward to? Okay, so according to research and market, the 2021 value of the Philippines diesel genset market was estimated at 152.9 million and is expected to witness a 5.4% compound annual growth rate to reach 240 to 45.2 million by 2030. The biggest driver of Digiset sales in the country is the huge gap in demand and supply of electricity, for instance, in, in Luzon, uh, which is inhabited by over 100 million people. 11,260 megawatt of energy was supplied in June 2021 against a peak demand of 11,976 megawatt. So we have a power shortage in the country in this case. So issues that often lead to power outages, which can make, uh, which can be made worse by natural calamities. We all know that the Philippines sits in the Pacific Ring of Fire, which leads to high frequency of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, as well as typhoons. So moreover, the Philippines being a developing country lags in several essential utilities, such as potable water. Everybody knows that. Thus, the water supply infrastructure is being expanded in the central Luzon region, which will create a strong need for gensets both during construction and for the operations of the facility. Now, civic, commercial, and residential spaces are being constructed also in the Philippines on a massive scale to address the rapid urbanization in the country. Key projects in this regard are like San Fernando Mixed Use Complex in Telebastagan, I hope somebody knows about this one, Master Tower in Cebu, and Marawi Trans Central Road Rehabilitation in Mindanao. Also, the Philippine National Railway South Long Haul Project PNR Bicol is being executed with an investment of over 2.5 billion, which will drive the sale of gensets during the construction and for diesel electric locomotives. So since most construction sites are not connected to the grid, they require alternative source of power. Hence, the growing construction industry is propelling the requirement for electricity to operate power tools, which is often met by diesel generators. So what does it mean? It means that there is a great potential for diesel generator industry in the Philippines in the coming days. So what are the usage of generators? In the event of power failure from the utility, buildings rely on backup power both for the safety and health of the public, as well as the protection of important business assets that cannot be lost during a power outage. That, that requirement is actually given in details in uh, NFPA, uh, NFPA 110. You can read about it. I will not discuss it further here because we have limited time. So unexpected disaster often disrupt the power to hundreds of thousands of people and businesses. Many buildings such as hospitals, airports, data centers, water and sewage facilities, fueling stations, and communication and transportation system require some sort of alternative power to ultimately save lives during the event of a crisis or calamities. 
Power loss also in a business can create a significant economic impact. The longer a business is without power, the greater the economic loss. So when this unexpected situation occur, backup power provides a source to support the equipment loads via diesel generator. This is how critical the function of a diesel generator is. The reason why we need to understand how it functions. Understand the controls, the protections, applied to both prime mover and the generating unit, and the most importantly, how to do the proper maintenance of the unit to ensure its reliability. So let's get into it, this diesel generator control. Oh, you can see in uh, the slide, the, the black diagram, sim very simple black diagram of a, a generator. When we speak about generator, what, what's, uh, I mean, what, when we speak about generator control, what's the first thing that comes out of your mind, our mind? Probably these types of control, example of control. There are tens, maybe hundreds of types of control available nowadays in the market. So these are just examples. These are the units found in front of uh, a panel of a generator. Of course, we, you are absolutely correct. These are called generator controllers, but let us get deeper into the principle of generator control operation. What do we control in a diesel generator? Number one is the engine, the engine speed. Two types of control for engine speed. We have the mechanical electrical control and we have the electronic control. For the mechanical control, all their generator sets utilize this control system. Fuel system is controlled by mechanical governor. A lot of the new generators does not have this one anymore. We have the electronic control. Newer generator sets use an electronic control system. This system interfaces and controls engine and generator control functions to provide a constant reliable power source. That's the part of the engine, of course, everybody knows. This is the Woodward example of Woodward governor, uh, a, a mechanical type. And this is the example of how the mechanical governor works. There are, it works on a centrifugal uh, system as it opens the uh, throttle valve. And we have here the example of an electronic governor. Of course, the reference will always be the magnetic pickup uh, attached to the flywheel of the generator. Later, we will elaborate that one. Okay, so what do we control again in diesel generator? Gener the second one is the generating unit or the alternator. Alternator is a crucial component of a diesel generator that converts the engine's mechanical input, the spinning of the shaft, into electrical output via induction. An alternator is constructed out of a rotor that creates alternating electricity by producing a magnetic field. Hence, the rotor is regarded as the alternator's primary component. You can see here uh, at the bottom of the slide, are the basic parts of an alternator. Now, okay, that is the part of the alternator. And uh, below, we can see the main parts of the alternator. So we are talking about induction and magnetic field. As electrical engineers, what are we concerned about here? Okay, the excit excitation system. What is an excitation system and how does it work in our diesel generator, this part, okay? The AVR will play a very important part as we discuss about control of the generator output. Excitation system. So what is an excitation system? The system that provides field current to the rotor winding of a generator. A well-designed excitation system provides reliability of operation, stability, and fast transient response. We have four common types of excitation methods nowadays. We have the shunt or self-excited, excitation boost system or EBS. We have the permanent magnet generator, which is very common. And we have the auxiliary winding regulation 
excitation principles or the AREP. However, all these four excitation methods use an automatic voltage regulator or ABR to supply DC output to the exciter stator. The exciter stator or the exciter rotor AC output is rectified to a DC input for the main generator rotor. Okay, let's see. This is our example of the automatic voltage regulator or ABR. This is a device that maintains the generator's normal voltage at a preset value, even when there are sudden load variation or in the case of special operations, such as parallel operation between generators, parallel operation between generators and the grid, start up or more demanding equipment. Parang i, kung tayo ay mga drivers, parang ikaw lang yan eh. Parang yung driver, uh, nagka-drive ka ng normal speed, 100 kilometers per hour. You will look into around your surroundings and you will decide what to do depending on the conditions of your surroundings. Kapag nakita mo may truck sa unahan nung mabagal, you will step on, on the accelerator to speed up and overtake the truck and uh, maintain again your normal speed. So every generator re requires certain voltage and currents for its excitation. Therefore, the ABR must be provided according to specific generator requirements. Now, let's see how ABR works. So how ABR works and how it controls the output of the generator. I have here a simple circuit. This is a shunt uh, excitation method. And uh, we have here an example of an ABR. Okay, rated voltage is, for example, is 220 volt AC. So set voltage is 220 volt AC. You have here, let's say it has an output of zero to 90 volts DC and an input of 100, 180 to 250 volt AC. Once again, this is the exciter winding for generator. This is a generator, okay? This one is the rotating diode. I hope everybody knows how to test diode. You have to test the forward bias and reverse bias to determine if the diode is working fine or not. Anyhow. And this is the generator windings. Now let's try to rotate the motor. When you take the more rotate the generator sorry if you take the generator current there is a a called a residual current inside the alternator this residual current gradually uh, develops in the system and it will provide uh, the, the necessary input current to and, and voltage into our AVR. Now, our AVR, okay, it has something called a triggering voltage. It will not operate, it will not work until the triggering voltage is rich or more than the triggering voltage. So if you don't have the triggering voltage, there will be no output. As soon as it reaches, the 50 volts triggering voltage. Some other uh, voltage regulator might have different uh, triggering voltage. You have to check that from the manufacturer. Uh, until it reaches the 50 volts triggering voltage, it will not work. So let's say it reached 50 volts. Now, as soon as triggering voltage setting of the AVS is reached, an internal circuitry called build up block will be powered up to develop and inject a high voltage that would send the required voltage to the exciter winding. That is the zero to 90 volts DC that is needed by the exciter to degenerate the necessary EMF into the rotor of the exciter winding into the rotor of the generator. It will be converted into, into a, a DC, into the rotor of the main generator winding and produce the output we needed from the generator. And then the cycle will continue. Okay. Now, okay, the 
AVR, it will be relaxed in that state on idle mode. It will be relaxed. It will continue to to uh, generate the needed uh, uh, its function. It will continue to work according to its function. Now, how it will do its re its real function? It is called automatic voltage regulator. So it has to act automatically to regulate the voltage. When you put the load, okay? When you put the load, it means that you are putting putting a, a stress on the generator. It means that the shaft of the engine will, will be harder to turn the alternator. In this case, the voltage will go down. And this is the function. As soon as the, our AVR senses that the voltage goes down to its required level, then it will inject more voltage into the excited to raise up the voltage and maintain the output voltage level of our generator. I hope everybody, everyone understand that. So that's it. So the DG set output will be 220 volt AC. Now let's discuss about the shunt or the four basic excitation, the four excitation methods that's, that's available in our today's technology. First is the shunt or self-excited. What about it? It features a simple and cost-effective design to provide input power to AVR. It requires no additional component or wiring. When problems arise, troubleshooting is simplified with less components and wiring to validate. But what are the drawbacks? Again, this is very simple, but of course, there is an innovation made because there are drawbacks with the previous technology. So what are the drawbacks? The AVR is impacted by the load the generator is powering. Again, pinakita ko kanina yung paano nag-operate ang, ang, uh, ang uh, AVR, simple AVR. And it reacts immediately according to the condition, the loading condition of the generator meron siyang triggering voltage. Kapag yung triggering voltage ay hindi naabot, there's a possibility that it will shut down the generator, that it will not provide the correct output, output voltage of the generator. Okay? If a short circuit occurs in the supply to the AVR, the generator will not have an excitation source. Okay? This causes a loss of generator power output. It can be used, of course, this, this type of excitation method can be used on linear loads, constant load applications that have non-linear loads, varying load, and are not recommended for generators with an excitation, with, with this excitation. So, anong ibig sabihin? Meron kasi tayong linear loads. Everybody knows uh, the linear loads and the non-linear loads. The non-linear loads are, are those that uh, possess harmonics, okay? Because it will draw more current in the, uh, from the generator. Okay. So the second one is the excitation boost system or the EBS. The additional component, you can see the, the diagram of an EBS type uh, excitation system on the left side. You can see that, that there is an additional component in the system like the excitation boost control or the EBC module, the excitation boost generator, System allows for dynamic response, less expensive and meets ex uh, requirements for providing 300% short circuit current. So, mas maganda ito kaysa doon sa shunt or self-excited because it has the capability of providing 300% short circuit current in, into the, the system, the generator, just in case there is uh, a requirement for that. So, non-linear loads such as motor starting, are improved when compared to shunt or self-excited method. So, mas maganda siya kaysa sa nauna. Kaya lang, kung makikita ninyo sa diagram, you added additional component, the EBG. It means that your generator will be longer. Ngayon, we, we, everybody knows that a, a standby generator, a backup power, uh, if you are putting it in a building, there is a space, certain space only 
for allocated for uh, backup generators. So itong ganitong type of generators will be longer. So you have to design the the room for for your gener uh, backup generator according to this one. Otherwise, magkaka problema kasi kayo kasi ang ating cooling system ng generator usually ginagawa yan meron tayong tinatawag na sound uh, yung sound about sound attenuation nire-reduce natin ang decibel level sa labas ng room so meron tayong ini-install na mga panels na it will not restrict the flow of air into the generator for the for the cooling but it will reduce the sound significantly uh, as compared between inside and outside so mal mal medyo malaki yan ang iba niyan uh, as, as as from based from my experience minsan mahigit isang dip pa ang lap ang kapal so if you will install an EBS uh, excitation system type generator then you you need to design the room according to to the dimensions also you have to consider the dimensions of the generator okay Okay, but this excitation system is not recommended for continuous power application. Yun naman. It is intended for emergency or backup power applications because when the generator starts the EBS system uh, or when the generator starts, the EBS system is, then, is engaged until operating speed is reached. The EBG is still generating power but the controller does not root it. So the EBG or the EBC control module is connected in parallel to the AVR and the exciter. The EBC receives signal from the AVR. When needed, the controller supplies varying levels of excitation current to the exciter at levels that depends on the need of the system. Okay, the additional power feed to the excitation system supports load requirements. This allows the generator to start and recover the excitation voltage. Now we have the permanent magnet generator. Generators equipped with permanent magnets are among the most well-known separately excited methods. A permanent magnet is mounted on the drive end of the generator shaft. Okay? So a clean, isolated, and interrupted three-phase waveform is produced when the generator shaft is turning. So some of the benefits of the generators equipped with the PMG excitation methods are Excitation field does not collapse, allowing for sustained short circuit ports to clear. Changing loads does not impact excitation field. Voltage is created on initial startup and does not depend on remaining magnetism in the field. During motor startup, the excitation field does not collapse because of lack of ABR supply. Again, sa ating shunt type, kumukuha tayo ng, uh, ng uh, voltage, uh, doon sa main winding, yung sinabi nating kanina na triggering voltage. But dito, we have the permanent magnet generator that supplies the need needed voltage by the ABR to operate on its peak level. Okay, Auxiliary winding regulation excitation principle or AREP. Sorry. Okay, the uses range from marine or industrial applications and are more practical in larger installation. As a separate excitation field, however, it does not uh, it, it does not use a component attached to the drive end of the shaft of the generator. These methods use shaft rotation and permanent magnet or generator to supply the additional excitation. So, nandun na siya, naka-integrate na mismo sa main winding. Ang kagandahan nito, ng type na ito, ay hindi kagaya ng PMG at saka ng, uh, ng EBG, ito ay walang additional length ng generator. Hindi, ka, hindi mo kailangan maglagay ng additional length. So it says that additional single phase winding is installed into the stator. As the generator shaft rotates, the stator main winding supply voltage to the ABR which creates the extra excitation voltage needed when supplying non-linear loads. 
All right, so that's the basic for our control. Now let's go to DigiSet protection. What do we protect in the generator? Of course, we have the engine protection and the alternative protection. Uh, during the start of our presentation, we showed several types of generator controllers. In fact, all of those controllers have similar functions to monitor both engine and electrical parameters na pwedeng maka-apekto sa normal operation ng generator unit. And that controller will react accordingly to prevent any damage to the unit. Let's see. Okay, ano ang monitor ng ating mga controllers? Very typical, kahit anong type ng controller, you can see that there are typical uh, parameters they are trying to monitor and uh, and control. So we have the engine lubrication system. We have the engine fuel system. Engine combustion air system. We have the engine cooling system. Engine starting air system dun sa mga black start na kailangan ng compressor. Engine exhaust system. Also, minomonitor din natin yung uh, off-engine parameters. So kahit nakapatay ang generator, uh, the, the, the controllers are continuously monitoring several parameters. Miscellaneous engine parameters like engine speed, clock hour meter, voltmeter. Okay, sa engine lubrication system, lube oil pressure, lube oil temperature, oil level alarm, lubricating oil filter differential pressure. What is this? Lubricating oil pressure, oil filter differential pressure. It means that there is there are sensors that monitors if the filters of our generators are black. There, there, are sen there is a sensor in the inlet and there's another sensor in the outlet. The difference in this, uh, between these two sensors will tell you that whether or not your filter is black. Okay? So crankcase pressure in the engine. Oil mist detector shutdown. What is oil mist detection shut shutdown? What type of uh, protection is this? It detects because the density of the oil is uh, proportional to the amount it parang ano yan eh, parang uh, parang uh, bumubuga. Kapag ka masyadong makapal yung buga niya, yung photo sensors parang uh, light transmitter na nagde-detect sa kanyang density will 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 be triggered. Uh, at magsisense siya at magsasabi sa, sa, sa control natin na there's something wrong with the uh, your uh, oil mist or yung level ng density ng iyong oil. Okay. Metal particle detection. So meron din pala tayo niyan. Sa ilalim yan. Metal particle. Kapag ka marami ng metal doon sa ating oil na nasa oil pan, anong tendency? Magkakaroon kasi ng scratch yung ating uh, between the piston wall, uh, the, the, the cylinder wall and the piston ring. And we all know na kapag ka marami ng ganun, magkakaroon siya ng, ng, ng scratch sa piston wall and it will reduce the efficiency of your engine. So kailangan natin i-monitor ang metal particle detection. What about the fuel engine system? Fuel pressure, fuel temperature, fuel filter differential pressure. Again, the differential pressure to determine if your filters are black. Engine combustion air system, what do we monitor? Inlet manifold air temperature, inlet manifold air pressure, air cleaner differential pressure. Napaka-importante. Engine cooling system, jacket water temperature, jacket water pressure, after cooler water temperature, after cooler water pressure expansion tank level alarm, cooling water, sea water pressure, kung sea water ang ginagamit natin sa cooling. Okay. Engine starting air system, again, again, for those black start na kailangan ng air compressor. Engine exhaust system, exhaust stack temperature, individual cylinder exhaust temperature, and the exhaust temperature deviation alarm. Here is an example of uh, two types of uh, control system. This, uh, I took it from Caterpillar. As you can see, almost identical ang kanilang mga uh, Nino monitor the parameters from the generators. Now let's go to diesel generator uh, maintenance. 
what are the general maintenance we put into our generators, diesel generators. We have the daily checks, the daily plus startup checks. We have the first maintenance 50 hours or six months, scheduled maintenance every 250 hours of operation. And we have the scheduled maintenance every 1,000 hours of operation. Again, dun sa mga uh, involved sa generators, we always need to identify the type of operation of our generators, right? If it is a prime power or standby power. Uh, kasi merong konting pagkakaiba pagdating sa maintenance ng prime power at saka ng standby power. Normally, kapag ka standby power yan, baka power sa isang building, uh, kinukuha na na lang natin yan ng mga maintenance contract. Ano? So what is in the daily checks? It is called a check or daily routine checks sa ating mga technicians. So, so what are what are those things that we need to check on a generator daily? We have checked the engine oil level. I'm not sure if everyone is doing this one because normally kapag ka magandang generator hindi na natin napapansin after uh, magkaroon ng problema. So we have to check the engine oil level. Check the whole lubrication system for any oil leakage. Check the whole cooling system for any coolant leakage. Check the coolant level. Check the fuel level. Check the whole fuel system for any fuel leakages. Perform general cleaning. Sabi nga ni uh, engineer, ano kanina? Ni engineer uh, Villarosa. Always keep it clean pagdating sa maintenance. Keep it cool. Keep it dry and keep it tight. So, ganun din sa ating mga generators. So, now, what about the daily plus startup checks? So, startup checks. So, you have to repeat the complete daily checks. Check the water heater block. Check the anti-freeze, the water ratio. Check the cleanliness of the generator. Again, Check whole air system for any leakage, hose and clamps. Check color of exhaust smoke. Later, I will discuss to you what are the significance of the color of the exhaust smoke. We have to check the batteries and their charge levels. Again, if this is a backup generator, normally there is an external source for our battery charger. If it is prime power, of course, it will take the, the, the charging uh, voltage. from uh, an, an alternator. Okay, so you have to check that one. Now, what is the voltage level for a good battery? It should be around 13 to 14. Should not be 12. If it is 12, now niyo, check your charging system. There might be a problem with your charging system if it is 12 below. It has a healthy battery should, for example, it is a, a, a 12 volts battery. It needs to have at least 13 to 14 uh, volts to make sure that it's healthy a healthy battery okay so again you have to check the battery charger and the charging alternator check all the pressure temperature sensor and gauges check the settings of avr card and governor card check the power cable transfer panel and its connections check the control panel and generator set control unit check the tension of the b belts Check the screws and bolts tightness for assembling and check the vibration isolators. Ito, minsan hindi nakikita ito until na umaalog na yung generators because ang vibration isolators natin minsan nakatago yung ano niya eh. Yung rubber. Okay, so what about the first maintenance for 50 hours, 6 months? You have to change the engine oil, engine lube oil. Change oil filters, change the fuel filters. Drain the water inside the water separator filter and repeat the daily startup check. But sir, alino pa ng engine oil? Ba't namin papalitan? Dinis pa ng oil filter, ba't namin papalitan? This is a requirement from the manufacturer. So kung hindi mo susundin yan, eh, pinag-aralan kasi ng manufacturer yan na kailangan gawin. Because especially... Uh, kapag ka bago ang generator mo we everybody knows na ang bagong engine is medyo tight ang bagong engine so there's there are possibilities that there could be some met metallic uh, parts that are 
inyo you know, na, na, na wala doon sa na, natanggal doon sa mga structures niya sa mga components niya na humalo sa oil. Minsan because the generator is new, hindi natin basta-basta makikita 'yan in my microns. So better to follow the requirement or the recommendation of the manufacturer to 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 prevent the damages to the generator and for us to avail the the maximum uh, efficiency of our generators. So what about the every 800 or 1,000 hours of operation? You have to check the cleanliness of the radiator, check the turbocharger, check the injector nozzles, check the setting of bulb gaps. Okay. Why do we need to check the setting of the bulb gaps? Of course, uh, our uh, our bulbs, di ba, sila ang... Uh, sila ang uh, especially sila ang nagtatanggal ng exhaust papalabas. So kapag ka hindi tama 'yan, magkakaproblema tayo. And kapag ka hindi tama ang valve gaps natin, may may possibility na yung spring natin ay sa ilalim ng valves ay mabasag and it will completely damage your cylinder head pati yung piston. So kailangan kailangan na sundin natin ito. So check the bibigyan ko kayo ng example niyan mamaya yung yung about problem with the the valves na na mali yung valve gap setting. So check the vibration isolators. Replace air filter primary and secondary elements. Check the radiator coolant. Now, periodic annual checks. Check hose and clamps, check the whole air system for any leakage, check the whole exhaust system for uh, uh, okay. Any leakage, pipe spiral, check the color of exhaust smoke. Again, the color of exhaust smoke, I will discuss it later. Clean the fuel tank, check the batteries and their charges, etc. Okay, as I was saying, engine uh, example of maintenance issues are smokes. Smokes are indicator that your generator engine have problem. So you have to understand, what if I encounter a, a, a white smoke? coming out from your engine what does it mean what does it signi signifies white smoke may mean water or vapor usually white smoke is a sign that the engine is running hot if the engine isn't getting enough water for cooling the remaining water will evaporate producing a white color smoke it could also indicate a water leak in the cylinder head or gasket okay So possible cause, the engine is too cold, faulty injector system, incorrect timing, or the engine is overheating. So yun ang mga dapat ninyong i-check kapag nakakita ninyo ng inyong generator ay nagbubuga ng malakas na puting usok. Okay. Eh, paano po kung ano, gray or black, blackish or gray ang smoke? Gray or black exhaust smoke in a diesel engine could... Uh, could indicate several problems. Wrong grade of fuel used. May ilan sa atin nagahalo ano ng oil. Hindi dapat. Follow the manufacturer recommendation. Clog air filter. Improper timing. Overheating engine. Leaking oil and faulty injection system. Okay. So that is causing our black smoke or gray smoke. Ito, nakita na ba kayo ng engine blue smoke? Blue smoke. Blue smoke is uh, from diesel generator, of course, because this is very rare, actually, uh, because of oil being burnt in the cylinders. Okay? It is the rarest type of smoke emanating from a diesel engine. Blue smoke should not be ignored but is common when starting an engine in cold weather. Why? Because the oil thins out when it is cold and some could escape into the cylinder and burn. Possible causes, high engine oil levels, worn out piston rings, old valves or cylinders. So these are the checkpoints. Whenever you find blue smoke coming out from the exhaust, Uh, of your 
diesel engine. Ayan, kita nyo? This one is actually caused by wrong uh, valve, valve gaps. This could be. Okay, when you overhaul generator, kapag nakita natin na itong bearing na ito, ay uh, may different, uh, may mga scratches at saka yung wear niya ay different from the rest, it will give you, it will indicate a problem. It will tell you that there's something wrong with the operation of your engine. Alright, ito rin, nabasag yung crankcase. Uh, just just uh, for information based from my experience before na na-imagine niyo yung uh, nag-overhaul kayo ng isang generator na 800 kVA sa big engine generator and then pagkatapos yung i-overhaul at i-hand over sa sa may-ari within 3 days the generator broke completely breaks and the engine is completely damaged parang ganito hindi na mapapakinabangan. Uh, you can imagine the, the pressure kung hindi dahil hindi natin minimaintain ng tama yung ating generators. Uh, it cost hundreds of uh, thousands of uh, real or millions because we have to replace the generator. Complete new set of generator into the customer. So medyo bigat na na naging problema. So always maintain your generators both engine and alternator so yung about sa alternator uh, you know how to uh, to test whether uh, diodes the rectifying diodes rectifier i mean rotating diodes are, are okay you have to remove the connections before you can test it the forward and reverse bias okay so I don't know what is the time. Let me end my presentation. So my conclusion is uh, just try to understand the diesel generator. Always understand the diesel generator, its functions, operations, and the signals it sends to communicate to us. Uh, it's a way to achieve its full operating and uh, service potential. Once again, thank you very much to the chapter, to IIEE for inviting me to be one of the uh, speaker for today. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much, Kaino, Sir Pangati, no, for a very comprehensive discussion about the DC generator. Now, there's some question there, sir. Um, from the anonymous attendee, sir, does it need to inject current in the winding of generator if the generator is not used for one year? Does it need to inject current in the generator? Okay. See, uh, it, sa, based on my experience, okay, if the weather is uh, very cold kasi, uh, meron tayong ginagawa para i-reheat yung, yung winding. Okay? But those are normally done on very extreme uh, cold weather. Uh I'm not sure from where it was taken because if the generator, if you rotate it, there is a residual current. It will produce a residual current. I don't think that there's a need to inject current into the generator, even if it is not being used for quite a while. So it will, it will, it will give you uh, the needed current for uh, the figuring voltage for the alternator, if, just in case you have a shunt generator, a shunt type uh, excitation system for the generator. So. I'm not very sure, really. I will search about that, but I don't think it's needed. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question here, sir, is well, uh, from Sir Ruel Teleron. What are the effects of frequency voltage, PF, or power factor, yata ito, of an 18 pulls and EFE variable frequency drives to generator if connected to generators and how to mit mitigate or solve the issues? Okay, so we are talking about uh, loads, uh, non-linear loads. Okay, kanina diniscuss natin about non-linear loads. Kapag ang generator kasi ay ininputan mo ng, uh, I mean, uh, niloadan mo ng non-linear loads, there will be a different reaction as compared to linear loads. Uh, kasi 
meron tayong tinata- yung, 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 yung tinatawag na uh, harmonics. So it means that the current draw will be higher. And the, if, if the requirement actually of the generator is based on what loads are available, then we can compensate. Because like, for example, if you are a design engineer and you know already that your load is going to be like this, then you have to order a type of generator that that will compensate the, the type of load that you have. Now, if you are saying that your load requires uh, requires a generator that could uh, handle high uh, higher uh, what do you call this one? Uh, there is a high harmonics in the system. Then use an excitation system like the PMG type. Okay? The PMG. So you will have a stable generator even when you put that uh, type of load. Another question there, sir. Um, what is or what is the sum pre-commissioning and testing on generator? And why very important to conduct load bank test on generator? Uh, can you please repeat that again? Uh, 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 what is the what is the sum pre-commissioning and testing on generator? And why very important to conduct load bank test on generator? Okay. Uh, okay. Pre-commissioning. Okay, I will answer first the why it is very important to to do the load bank test for generators. Because when you order a generator, for example, I am the customer. If I order a 100 kBA generator, then I need to make sure that before I put it into the generator room, which is not easy, I have to make sure that really this generator is capable of carrying what they promised with their generators. For example, it's, it is capable of having 100 kBA generator. It should be able to carry 100 kBA generator. Sa load bank test, ginagawa ang 100% testing. Minsan, 110% testing. Depende kung nirequire ng customer. Ang sinabi nila, gusto, no, no, gusto ko 110% uh, test on resistive load. Sometimes it's not possible. Okay? Because... Because 100 kBA, okay, is not 100 kilowatt, okay? You can only do the, the 100% test using a, uh, a, an inductive load, okay? So you, if the customer will ask you to test it, then provide an inductive load, okay? So this is very important for the load testing. Uh, because this is the only way that the customer can prove that your generator is really capable of holding the, the, uh, the, the, the capacity that the generator promises. Now, but we have to understand that the normal operating, I will add, add this one, the normal operating of the generator is 70 to 80 percent of its capacity. Okay, this is the normal one. Now, anong ibig sabihin ito? Dapat, kung, especially those generators na mga prime power, if your generator is running below 70%, lalo-lalo na below 30% ng rated capacity, it will be very, very dangerous sa inyong generator. Meaning your generator is run, not running or the engine is not running at its optimal uh, operating level. What does it mean? It means your engine is not working on what it's supposed to, on how it's supposed to. And the consequence will, the, the, the engine will not burn the fuel completely. Doon magbibuild up yung carbon sa ating combustion uh, system. Kapag nagbuild up ang, ang carbon doon, it will cause scratches on the cylinder wall, against the cylinder wall. And this will affect the efficiency of our uh, engine and eventually the generator. So 
So, okay, it is important to test with the load bank because we need to make sure that the, the generator is capable, but at the same time, everybody must understand that the operating level of the generator should be around 70%, 70 to 80%. That is the optimum, optimum level of the generator. And this is the perfect condition for every generator to work. Uh, yeah. So, and what, what, what was the first question again, Larry, please? Uh, what is some pre-commissioning testing for? Pre what is pre some pre-commissioning testing on generator? Okay, pre-commissioning pre testing. Uh, you have, of course, you have to run the generator while it is in the yard. We have, we are talking about uh, PDI, pre-delivery inspection test. Okay, every uh, supplier of the generators are doing the PDI before it shift the generator into the customer site. What are there in the PDI? You have to check, of course, the engine and the alternator. You have to check the that. The engine is operating normally, and you will put, you will do the load test also during the PDI. Normally, during the PDI, we are loading only with the system load bank. Okay. And the the, the checklist we have the checklist as recommended by, by by the manufacturer. Every manufacturer includes the checklist in their book whenever they deliver a a, a generator to the customer. So you have to follow those checklists pre-delivery inspection checklist and operate the generator, make sure that it is operating according to, to what uh, the manufacturer is saying. Okay. Another question, sir. Um, which is more practical to use on a large load? One large generator or two parallel genset? What is more practical for large load? When you design a backup generator, you have to understand the type of the load that you have, okay? When you, when you have a, a, a load that is constantly running or constantly connected to the generator, it will operate continuously. It will be the prime power. It will be on island mode, okay? So it means that, that uh, you don't need to parallel, right? Uh, then one generator will be okay because you will satisfy the requirement that the generator will be operating at its optimum level of 70 to 80 percent of its rated capacity. So that would be good. But then if your load is a motor, okay, if your load is a motor, a big motor, which will draw a, a high current, uh, amount of current from your uh, generating unit, then a single generator could not handle that. Okay, so you still need to bring in another set of generator based on your calculation that would compensate. Kasi kapag ka, kasi ikaw ay may paralleling, okay? Ito, ito, ito. Lagi natin sa tandaan. Always maintain the optimum operating level of the generator. But if your load is a motor, Hindi naman pwedeng isang generator lang yan. Your generator will stall. Pa mamamata yan. Lagi. Hindi mo mabubuhay ang iyong generator kapag niloadan mo ng ganyang kalaking uh, motor load. So, kailangan maglagay ng mga tatlo na generator. But, it will run on uh, global running. It will, it will, it will, uh, um, what do you call this one? It will uh, synchronize. Okay. And automatically, normally automatically, don't make it manual. It is very difficult, although you can do that by synchroscope, but it is very difficult to operate in manual, uh, synchronizing in manual. Okay, so you have three generators, for example, then it will be running in global, global running, what we call global running. And then it will, the system will detect after you started your biggest load, normally you start the biggest load. Then the system will detect how much is the percentage that every, each generator is giving to supply to the load, okay? If you set the parameters, the electrical parameters, your control unit, that the generator should always carry 60 to 70% or 70 to 80% of its rated capacity, then it will start to deload the rest of the generator, okay? It will deload one generator. Now, the system said, 
I'm still running only at my 50% or 40% rated capacity. Okay. Is the one generator capable of holding one continuous load? If it is capable at 70 to 80%, which one you set, 62, 70, it's up to you. Then if it is capable, one generator capable of, of, of uh, carrying uh, on it, uh, uh, alone, then it will deload again the second generator and stop it. Okay? And then if the generator, because you are now loading the biggest si size of your load, as what the question was. Okay. So it means that this generator now, single generator is capable of carrying one, one uh, 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 the, the load, the older load, the biggest load by itself alone. Now you will not be consuming too much fuel. You will be uh, doing it economically. So, pero yung sinasabi natin na okay lang ba na isa lang, uh, na may big load, again, the optimum level is 70 to 80%, but if you have a motor load, you can never start your motor with a single generator. Okay, take note of that. Okay, last pahabol na lang po, sir, before we end this, the, uh, the certificate. This will be the last, sir. Uh, marami dito, pero ito na lang po last, sir, na question. Pa, paano na uh, lang, during... sir? Uh, pwede kong sagutin yan. Pa, pa, babasahin ko mamaya, and then sasagutin ko okay. na lang. Okay. Uh, uh, sige, sige. I think that would be all na lang siguro kasi you will cater those questions siguro after na lang siguro sa awarding sure, of sure. the certificates. So, pakipresent po yung certificate ni sir, mga ate. So, Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Engineer Eduardo K. Bangati Jr. for imparting valuable insights as resource speaker on the topic Diesel Generator Control, Protection, and Maintenance held on March 12, 2023 via Zoom conferencing. Signed. Engineer Joseph Darren Clare is Solicar, the chairman of the IIE Training and Continuing Professional Development Committee. Engineer Alberto Herrera, Jr., 2023 IIE National Secretary. Engineer Cataleno E. Rania, 2023 IIE BP <coughs> Technical Affairs. And Engineer Lendon R. Baggy. 2023 IIEE National President. Thank you so much, Kai, Sir Eduardo, Engineer Eduardo A. Pangati, Pangati Jr. P. Thank you very much, Engineer Larry, and thank you very much to the chapter and to IIEE for inviting me here. Thank you.